Greetings, beloveds. Welcome to another episode of Arranging Black Marriages with Coach Felicia Killings. I pray you're having a blessed day. Listen, it's beautiful outside today. It's uh, warm and awkward. <laughs> this humidity just gets to me. But anyways, we'll, we, we keep working it out. Uh, anyways, I pray you're having a blessed day. Um, hopefully all the things that you are working on, your goals, your aspirations, your desires for a suitable mate, all these things, I pray they're coming together. Uh, hopefully you had a chance to watch our previous episodes, especially the one where I interviewed David Kumar, who talked to us about Asian American culture and how they implement a form of arranged marriages, but combining it more with some of the traditional Western values. Uh, it's a great chat. And I, like I said, I, I encourage you to go ahead and watch that episode. I loved it. I can't wait to bring him and his wife to the podcast once again, and hopefully I'll be able to interview other couples who have either practiced a form of arranged marriages or they are considering it for their children. So um, that's going to be great. Listen, this new episode, I want to talk more about some of the things that will help individuals like you determine what's going to be the best possible kind of relationship or marriage for you. Obviously, this episode is going to be geared more towards the women. Fellas, if you're watching it, um, just a disclaimer, I don't often do much teaching and coaching when it comes to men. I feel like men should be taught by other men. You, they understand you better. They know how you think. I don't know how you think. I can only go by observations and what I receive from chatting with some of the men in my life. So um, my talking, my teaching is really going to be geared towards women um, with this. But understand, it's not me trying to put you men to the side. Obviously, we love you and we're trying to do everything we can to become the best versions of ourselves so we can have these wonderful wonderful, healthy, whole relationships. Um, but yeah, I just want to put that disclaimer out. Secondly, this is another disclaimer. I do not consider myself a relationship expert. My expertise comes from some of the science of building online businesses and book writing and whatnot. That's my expertise, and that's really why folks call me uh, Coach Killings. So it's in that area. I do, however, use this platform to just elicit some different ideas and to get um, women like yourself thinking about how you can prepare yourself for a suitable mate or how you can enhance your current relationship so that it turns into a healthy, whole, strong marriage. So I only do this based upon the teachings that I received growing up, also my observations of looking at my father and his marriage, and some of the other successful unions. So that's where my commentary is coming from. I will add this, I am familiar and affiliated with some relationship experts who have created really great empowering coaching programs. Um, as you stay connected to the foundation and this particular podcast, I will be bringing these folks to you so that you can learn how they have crafted a formula to help them find suitable men. They also, some of them work with men to find suitable women, but you get what I'm saying. These are some wonderful certified, some of them certified, some of them aren't, but these are wonderful relationship marriage coaches. Um, and, and I give them that credit. So again, I kind of want you to see Arranging Black Marriages as just the podcast where I give you my background and teachings from that perspective. But when it comes to the science of creating a really healthy marriage or a really healthy relationship, I'm always going to refer you to some of these great coaches that I'm connected with. So with that said, let's go ahead and chat a little bit about today's topic. I want to address this concept of non-negotiables. Um, this is something that I had to develop, especially after my divorce from about seven-ish years ago. I needed to decide what I was going to do in terms of a relationship. Now, a couple things here. Firstly, I know some women, after they divorce, they don't even entertain getting married again. Some women simply just want to date, be done with the person if the relationship is no good, and perhaps move on to the next one. Um, some women who do have children, like I have a daughter, 
Um, we are thinking about marriage again because I want my daughter to know what it's like to see a good, healthy marriage. I want her to um, be exposed to a really great father who's going to love her, protect her, show her what it means to have a good man in her life. So that element is important to me, which is why marriage is such, it's like at the top of my priority list. So that's, that's my thing. Um, but even as I was contemplating entering this dating market all over again, I had to, one, reflect on some of the issues of my previous marriage and whether or not I was capable of handling um, a situation like that again, which I'm absolutely not. After determining what I could not handle anymore, I figured out that I needed to create certain non-negotiables, which would help protect me and help me to sift through the the kind of men who would probably fall underneath those non-negotiables. So sometimes this can be considered setting like setting standards for yourself or you know having some kind of parameters and boundaries which if a person if a man crosses then you know like this is probably not the kind of relationship I want to pursue. And I think that's actually healthy. Now, the part that becomes unhealthy is when women use, they create these unbearable standards where the guy has to be six foot five, he has to make $250,000, he has to live in a certain city, he has to, have, like these kinds of um, standards I feel are just way too superficial. They don't play a part in understanding how a man of vision can can and needs to grow with another woman who can help administer his vision. So um, it, I'm not going on that extreme and I actually don't support women who think like that. There are a lot of great men who earn average income and they're very happy with their life. They just want companionship at that point. And if you too just want companionship, you want to grow old together, um, then don't push th those average earning men to the side just because they don't make a certain figure. Instead, begin to see like, what is his vision? What is he looking for? And are you compatible? Are you suitable enough for that kind of work? So getting back, even though certain standards I find to be um, off the wall, right? There are certain things that I feel a woman should do, and that is create some kind of non-negotiables. So I only have three non-negotiables. One is you cannot be a chronic, um, you cannot get involved with the law too much and, you know, getting in trouble all the time. I cannot afford to deal with that because it, it does something to my psyche. It breaks our family structure. It affects my child. Secondly, no kind of addictions, no, and no kind of abuse, no drug abuse, no alcohol abuse, no physical abu abuse, no financial abuse, definitely no emotional abuse, and dot, dot, dot. And thirdly, no infidelity. So these are factors for me that are so crucial because each one of them have a way of negatively affecting the social unit. And I'll just talk about one for example. So um, when it comes to infidelity, I cannot function in a healthy relationship when I'm fearful that my husband is out with someone else, another woman. And that is because anytime there's infidelity or adultery, you are not just breaking the social structure, but you're also causing future damage. So let's say my husband and I are doing well financially. We make six figures together and um, we're building this great empire, social, political, and economic empire. If my husband violates me, and goes and cheats, then he is essentially, he can bring home a disease, he can bring home an extra child, he can bring, he can bring some other female into the picture who might try and destroy what we are building. This is why it's a huge disaster. It's a huge non-negotiable for me. I do not tolerate it in the least bit. 
Um, and so some folks don't mind. Like there are some women who don't care. There's some women who are like, as long as this man brings home money and whatnot, I don't care if he cheats, you know, just make sure he does. Like, I'm just not that person. So um, if there ever is a relationship where that takes place and I kind of have to put I have to move on or at least give that person time to get himself together to until, you know, we are both in a place where we're saying, no, we are exclusive. We both belong to each other only and permanently and for a lifetime. That's just how I am. But again, it's because I'm thinking about all of these other other issues. And especially for um, someone like myself where I have this public platform and there are other factors that play into this. So a, a husband who just breaks our marriage vows and commits adultery, it's going to affect the branding and the business that I've established as well as what he has established. These are just unnecessary issues. And plus, God said, don't do it. Like, there's a reason for it. So um, it's important for me to be affiliated and connected to a man who values fidelity, he values loyalty, he values understanding and compassion, just like he wouldn't want me to go out and destroy his reputation or his career by, um, you know, entangling myself with other men. I would want the same kind of love and the same kind of respect because what we're trying to build is a legacy and I need a man, I, I need a husband who can think in terms of legacy and not just some temporary pleasure, which by the way, will result in something disastrous. So that is a non-negotiable for me. And in fact, in another episode, I'm going to talk about adultery and, um, this idea that some of the relationships experts on Twitter were talking about the other day in terms of corporal punishment. They asked, they were basically asking this question, should there be some kind of corporate, not corporate, sorry, corporal um, criminal um, punishment for men who cheat and women who cheat, but that's kind of where they were going at. So that, that's going to be an interesting talk. I'll give my perspective on it, but um, ladies, I do encourage you to consider some non-negotiables, maybe just three of them. Again, don't be over the top with it because you don't want to eliminate any of the prospects who might be in your current orbit. And so that's just something to keep in mind. So I pray that this little observation and teaching helped you in some way. If you would like to connect more and chat um, about these conversations, head over to Twitter class where we discuss relationships. You'll actually get connected to some of the, um, co the, the coaching that takes place over there. If you would like to go through a coaching program, you can also let me know and I can make that connection with some of our coaches. I think that this is a prime opportunity for us to learn to do things a better way, a different way, so we can get better results. And um, if you don't have a council of elders who can help facilitate this type of union or relationship that you want, the next best thing is to hire a relationships coach. So that's all I want to share with you. Have a blessed time, beloved. And until next time, we'll chat more about arranging black marriages. Take care.